Well, we can have a chat now with friend of the show and Wallaby scrum half Nick White, ahead of their match against France and following their famous win in Scotland. Nick, how are you, mate? I'm good, thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Nick, it's awesome to have you, mate. But look, I've got to call you out on something because I went to the game live, right? I had a few beers responsibly with a few mates and didn't have the same perspective as watching it on TV. So I messaged you yesterday and was like, mate, let's get you on. Love to have you on. And then I actually saw what you did at the end of the game, which one would say is very smart. I would say, mate, give us a chance. You should have give us, <laughs> given us one last shot to keep that ball in. Nah, mate, absolutely not. Yeah, look, I've seen a lot of people have seen, seen it that way. Maybe I should have uh, should have given him another crack, but uh, but I did. I, I took it to the middle of the field, gave you every opportunity to uh, to, to, to have a crack at it, but uh, uh, luckily got a got a dead duck away towards uh, Big Duan there, and he wasn't too happy after it. He came up and he said, "Mate, what was that?" Well, good on you. We should have done it in 2010. Phil Godman should have kicked it off in Wales, and we would have beat Wales. But anyway, that's old news. Yeah, look, obviously, when he was taking the um, the penalty kick, we were planning uh, for how we get the ball back from halfway. Yeah, obviously assuming he'd get that one, um, planning for the worst. So once he'd missed it, yeah, knew that, um, you know, he'd taken up a fair chunk of the time and that it was in the red. So all we had to do is just get it off the field. But I, um, Luke Pierce, um, made sure I was aware that I had to bounce, but I knew I had to somehow grubber it off. But I, I didn't. The last thing I wanted to do was send one downfield and give them a chance to come back and maybe hit a drop goal or or carry it over halfway and then get a penalty and get another crack at it. So. First and foremost, I'd like to congratulate the whole of the Wallabies, especially you, Nick. Firstly, for beating Scotland, but secondly, for listening to a referee for once, you know. It, it, I mean, it's one of those things that happens, right? <laughs> Here, we Here we go. I had to say it. I, I had to say no, it. Yeah. No, no, no. And you, you hear referees say it all the time. Like, make sure you tap it before you kick it out to, to people with penalties at the end of the game so they don't just send it straight out. Otherwise, we play on. But, um, yeah, look, you had to bring that one up again, didn't you? <laughs> um, <laughs> well we had we had a bit of interaction on social media didn't we about it like you and you were messaging me privately as well and i get it obviously a lot of pain from the aussies with what happened for our listeners at the end of that bled game against new zealand but listen to the referees crucial isn't it mate let's be honest it is yes we we learned the hard way obviously uh yeah but we'll, we'll leave let that dead dog lie um no so <laughs> As they say, but you know, it's um, yeah, we learnt the hard way there that one. So we're it's good to see we're learning from our mistakes. Yeah, we had a brief chat on Friday. Um, big shout out to the Milkman Coffee in Edinburgh, one of the best coffee shops around. But I saw you outside there. I, was, I met my old mate Petrus Dupassi, and naturally, one of the things you talk about is what you're doing after the game. And I found it really interesting that there's not a lot that happens now after games. And the interaction that we had said where that's where a lot of things happen after games in terms of connecting with the opposition going out for a few beers, getting to know different characters. You know, friend of the show, Drew Mitchell, that's how we became mates. James Hallwell as well, having a few beers with him after we played. There's nothing now, is there? No, it's a little bit sad. Obviously, I think COVID had a fair bit to do with it, but you know, the times of throwing on you know, a bag of fruit and going up to, to have a, a dinner with the opposition after a game, have a couple of beers, you know, there's... There's guys in the side, like, and, and I was one when I was younger that have, you know, like, we have no re- interaction with the, you know, the big stars that are up here in the north, and um, you just don't get a chance to see them anymore. So there is a little bit of going into the sheds. We went into the, the, the Scottish sheds after the game and had a beer with them there, which was awesome. But, you know, that, that ability to, um, you know, you just don't see, you know, the rugby players from, from this side of the, the hemisphere all that often. So to be able to sit down and have a beer with your opposition who you don't know and, um, get to know them like that's the beauty of rugby like it's played all over the world and and you meet people from all different places and you know your one beer becomes a few beers and and they say oh look we're going out in town come with us and you know then you've got a friend for life so yeah look it's um yeah, there's, there's not much of that goes on anymore but you know the, i think hopefully um that was just a, a bit of a covid thing and, and it'll start coming back into into rugby because yeah that's that's a huge part of it for me anyway no, the Scotland lads ain't allowed out, are they, Goody? Well, I was about to say, Gregor won't let him have more than two beers, so there's no <laughs> chance drinking with Scotland lads. Uh, what are you expecting this weekend? Dupont against you should be pretty tasty, eh? A bit like Faf de Klerk against you. <laughs> um, yeah, Dupont, he's uh, not only the best nine in, in the world, he's the best player, so going to have my hands full there. And um, Yeah, look, it's it's a, it's a the test that we want. Um, uh, you know, 11 months out from World Cup, you know, being able to play, um, you know, one of the favourites, um, if not the favourite, in uh, a World Cup in, in France next year. So, yeah, it's going to be tough. We, we know, I guess, the beauty of playing France here is we know what to expect. We, they're going to be very good and that we're going to have to be very good to, to match it with them. So, 
you know, there's a little bit of that, that kind of narrows the mind in that we're just going to focus on ourselves and, and make sure we put out a decent performance because if we're a little bit off, we know that we're going to, um, you know, you know, not going to measure up. So we're going to have to be good this weekend. Yeah, Michael Hooper's back as well. Headline news last week. How good is it seeing him back? Well, I've, as a fan, it's amazing seeing him back on the field and also being how transparent he was as well in the lead up to uh, this tour and everything that happened before. Yeah, awesome to have him back. Um, you know, there's, for a lot of guys, you know, this is their first proper tour um, up north. You know, last year we came up and it was a COVID one, which is a bit funny, you know, just being in hotels the whole time. So this one's a proper big one where there's plenty of distractions and to have a guy like Hoops that's um, done so many up here, that experience, you know, a lot of the younger guys are leaning on that. And from a personal point of view, it's just good to see him back, um, you know, that he's he's come at the other side of it. You know, he's, like you said, he's been open about that, you know, he's not cured and all of a sudden just better now, but he's in a better place than what he was. And, and he's got a lot of, um, you know, people here to, to help him. He's got his, his wife over here, his son, Tommy, his, his mum and dad have come over as well. Obviously, within the team, a lot of support, and uh, and he's he's got the tools there to, to you know to make sure he's okay. And uh, and what a hell of a rugby player to have on your side, so that's good too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just on the mental aspect of the game and everything that goes with it. Again, off the back of our brief discussion around the South African backlash when Fafta Clerk clipped you, he almost killed you. Let's be honest, he almost killed you that day. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the stick that you took online, I think it's important for you to share that and also how that affected you and how it's potentially affected your family because everyone talks about hashtag rugby values, but for whatever reason, in the last two or three years, it's probably COVID, let's blame COVID, but... <laughs> Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of backlash now that comes after every game of rugby that you see and you go online and, and you took a fair brunt of that after your game against South Africa. I did, uh, yeah, look, it, um, you know, firstly, you know, if I had my time again, I'd, I'd, I'd do things differently, like, no doubt. I, I'd go on the rugby field and, and make mistakes every game I, I, I play and, um, and you know, like come off and, and learn from them. And, and that's no different, that one. Um, copped it a bit. Like, um, I'd, I'd say I'm... I've got pretty thick skin. I, um, you know, I, I, I give a bit and I, I get a bit, but you know, it, it did go probably a bit too far. Um, you know, when when your wife's copying it and they're making comments about your family, um, your kids, like it, it, it went a fair bit too far. And um, yeah, look, it, it was disappointing. It did affect me a little, but you know, I, um, yeah, look, it's try to leave it back there, but, you know, and, and, and at risk of bringing it up again and, and copying it again. But, you know, I feel like it does need to be, like some light needs to be shed on it because, you know, for, for other players out there that maybe don't have as thick a skin, it can be, I guess, pretty um, detrimental. Yeah, Faf's all good with you though, isn't he? Oh, mate, we have a, I think we have a healthy respect for each other. <laughs> um, you know, I, uh, you know, he's a good player. Um, we've had plenty of battles. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we get a chance to, to sit down and have a beer at some stage in the future. Yeah, 100%. But just, just to clear, the, the tash is okay, is it? Just to clear everything up. <laughs> <laughs> and lighten, Mate, the, yeah. lighten right. the mood a little bit. That's it. Thank you, Goody. On that note, last year I uh, I didn't have my cap. But I feel a bit <laughs> <laughs> there he is. <laughs> nice. The Peaky Blinder is back. <laughs> 